You want to start with your team or my team? Who we'll started with your team? Okay, we can start with my team. I have a bone to pick with Michigan fans. I was in the umhoops.com forums. I don't know if they'll care that I'm talking about them or not, but uh, good site, very well-run fan site. We have a lot of normally very intelligent, in-depth Big Ten basketball discussions over there. I've been a longtime member of that community. And uh, the current topic that everybody's hot on is listing the top 25 players in the Big Ten because every year UM Hoops partners with Inside the Hall, the Indiana site, and they put out these are the top 25 players. And uh, they told us they were going to start working on that. And all the commenters jumped in and were like, here's my top 25, blah, blah, blah. I put mine out last week. It was a tough exercise. We could probably release that at some point if we wanted to, but I, I alluded to it. I had like Tony Perkins eighth. And basically after the top six, it's really gross. And you're picking between like Coleman Hawkins and AJ Hogard and Olivier Kamwa and a bunch of guys. You just don't know if they're good or not. So, uh, some people like kind of pushed back on me last week a little bit, had a little discussion, whatever. Fast forward to yesterday and two of the most prominent, I think that's fair to say, most prominent commenters in this community, two people I respect, I've had a lot of discussions with, who I view as like intelligent basketball fans, put their top 25s out. Mind you, they are Michigan fans. One of them has Olivia Conway, Olivier Kamwa as the third best player in the Big Ten. One of them has Olivier Kamwa as the fifth best player in the Big Ten. And all these comments, like anybody interacting with this, nobody was like, that's too high for Kamwa, except for Dylan, who runs the site. Like actual UM Hoops was like, wow, you guys are high on Kamwa. I think Michigan fans just like think this is an All-American who just waltzed through the door. And I have no idea why, because like Tennessee people have not painted him that way. Like, if you watch highlights, if you watch written breakdowns of who Olivier Kamwa is from people who know his game, nobody views him that way. Like, Tennessee is like, this is a good player who's really inconsistent. And if he could ever figure out his consistencies, he'd be a good starter. That's all we've gotten. <laughs> like, he's playing with Finland, and he's he's looking good. Like, he's hitting some shots for Finland right now. He's not looking like an NBA star or anything, or like a breakout first-team All-Big Ten guy. So... Man, I jumped in and pushed back hard. I was just like, this is absurd, you guys. Like, you you really have a list of Kamwa ahead of Tyson Walker and Jameer Young and Boo Booey. That is absurd. And for the most part, no one on the boards agreed with me. Like, Michigan fans were more in agreement with the guys who have Kamwa third in the conference than where I do, which I think was, like, 12th. Like, so I, I need to, one, check all these Michigan fans. This is crazy that you have Kamwa that high. But two, I want to throw it to you and give you the opportunity to respond. Where should Olivier Kamwa be rated heading into this season? And how crazy is it to have Kamwa ahead of Tyson Walker? Uh, well, first of all, I love speaking to Buckets 12. Let's let that be known right now. Um, answer those couple questions. Having him above Tyson Walker and you say, say I'm the Michigan State fan, say what you want. That's just, that's asinine. It truly is. It's just wrong. It's not like a thing that's up for debate. There's not, there's a world I can see it. There's not, uh, if these things play out a certain way, it's just, it, it's a fact that Tyson Walker is a better player in the big 10 than Olivia and Kamala. Like that's just, that's not up for debate. I actually really like where you had him at. Cause that's where I would have him at. I have him somewhere probably between like 12, 15, um, like his ceiling being like, I don't know, the eighth best player, I guess, in the Big Ten. Like, I, I truly do think he's a good player, he can do some things and has skills. But having him as third is just like, come on, this it's it's just straight up wrong. It's not looking at your player through an a, a unbiased lens, it's actually looking, I don't even know, it's something way worse than a biased lens, just having him that high. Um, but you know, it. It is okay to be excited about him. I would be too. I think he's one of the better transfers. Like you mentioned a couple of times before, when people talk about the shortcomings of Michigan, they do fail to mention that and and Kamal was a you know pretty highly touted portal addition and ad for them. So um yeah, having them above eighth to me is just just wrong. You can't even make an argument for it. Yeah, so the thing when you go through this exercise of listing players, it makes way more sense to like tier it this year than it does to actually try and list them because whoever you're putting sixth feels insane 
to put like you're you're picking between like Cliff Amorier, Coleman, whoever you think Indiana's best player is, whoever you think Iowa's best player is, whoever you think Wisconsin's like AJ Hogarth. Like you're just gonna put someone there that doesn't feel good at all. So like in that sense, like okay, if you have Com with sixth, whatever. I still think that's really rosy. But it, there's just this huge group of guys between like six and fifteen that all feel more like the fifteenth best player than the sixth best player. The issue I have is that the top five should be stone cold locks, and this the, there shouldn't be debate on the top five. Zach Eady's the best player in the Big Ten. Taron Shannon's the second best player in the Big Ten. Tyson Walker, Jameer Young, and Boo Booey, in whatever order you want to put them in, are the third through fifth. Those what guys. Are you putting in? I'd put Tyson third. I'd put Boo fourth. I'd put Jameer fifth. And those those three guys, here's why. Those three guys have already been the offensive engines of good teams. Like, it's it's not debatable. We know what they are. Tyson Walker averaged 14.8 points per game super efficiently on a team that made the Sweet 16, and now they're a top five team in the country. He's going to be good. Boo Booey was absurdly productive. He was the biggest reason Northwestern lost their best player and then made the round of 32 and finished top four in the Big Ten. And now Audige is gone. He's going to do more. It's not debatable what Boo Booey is. Jameer Young was the leading scorer on a Maryland team that, again, was a top finisher in the Big Ten, top half finisher, and finished in the round of 32. He's been the best offensive player on a good team. Those three things are not debatable. Everything else is hope. Like when you look at Kamwa, I don't understand how anyone could even add up to a world where he would be ahead of Tyson Walker. Like last year, Cart, I don't I don't get where this is coming from, man. Last year, Kamwa averaged eight and four in SEC play. He played 23 minutes a game. And everyone's pushback is like, oh, that was just Barnes. Like Barnes had a bunch of front court guys he had to play. No, if anyone was good enough, Barnes would have just played the dude 32 minutes and he would have been great. He wasn't that. He was a good starter who was super inconsistent and in his great games was great. His horrible games were horrible. So, like, it, there isn't even a world, like, even in the most optimistic view of this, there isn't a world that Conway averages 15 points on 40% from three next year on a top 10 team in the country. That's and, the... And- Sorry, sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. But another point that I think needs to be made, too, in this is that those top five guys that you named, consistency. That's what it was last year with those guys. All consistent. Olivier Conway, not a consistent player currently at this point. Is, at this point in his college career. Could be one. But everything we've seen, the sample size we've seen, is that he's not consistent. Yeah. And, again, that's the baseline for those three guys I mentioned. Like, Tyson Walker's baseline is 15 points super efficiently on a top five team in the country next year. It's what it is. So uh, I just don't get it, man. I think it's setting up Kamwa for disaster, to be honest. Like, um, it, like if if this is really the standard Michigan fans are going to hold him to, I think they're going to be wildly disappointed. And that's not uh, – people interpret this. Michigan fans seem to interpret this as if I'm hating on Olivier Kamwa. I'm not. I think this was a fantastic ad. I said it with Tristan on the show yesterday. I think when you look at what Michigan brought in, if you can forget about what they didn't bring in in Caleb Love, I think Conwin Burnett's a top 20-ish transfer class alone in the country. I think both those guys are good starters. And you're just hoping that Kamwa can become what those three guards already are. And we don't know. Like he he needs to be a first option. The only thing I will say that gives me hope is like Jawan Howard consistently, whoever Jawan Howard's first option is, is productive. Like, I feel like whoever he picks to be his first option is going to be a productive, good player. Whether that's Kamwa or Doug McDaniel, I don't know. I think it might be Doug over Olivier because I think Doug's better at that. (laughs) So we'll see what happens. But, like, can we please just slow the roll? Like, we don't need to anoint this guy a guaranteed first-team All-Big Ten player just because he's wearing your favorite team's colors. Like, that's absurd to me. It is. And last thing I want to say, and it caught a hot take or whatever, what it, whatever you want to call it, call it take. Um, my state, the claim that I want to make right now is that if you do a top 25 players at the end of the season, Namari Burnett will be ahead of Olivia Kamwa in rankings. Michigan fans are going to hate that. I don't hate that, but I'm also really high on Burnett. Yeah. I, I, I was a little bit, 
I, I was a little bit harsh on Burnett, I think, at the start of it. And then you kind of said some things to me. I went back. I watched some things. Um, I'm not saying I'm just, like, completely flipped to, like, oh, my God, it's an amazing ad. But not being talked about enough what he can do. And I think they're – I actually would feel pretty confident in saying that I think the Mark Burnett, at the end of the year, if you're making a player ranking the Big Ten – could be better than Olivia and Kama. Also defensively, Burnett's really, really good too. In fact, if people want to bring up what uh, Kama is defensively, Burnett's just as good defensively, and he could probably be better offensively, skill set wise. So, uh, you know, I, I see, I see a world where that where that can happen. Yeah, I think Burnett's going to end up playing on ball more than people expect him to. And you're right, like that's why Michigan does have the makings of a really good defensive team, largely because of Burnett and Kama, but. Um... I just I don't get it. I this whole all of those guys, everyone we just named, Kamwa, Burnett, Doug, whoever you want from Michigan's roster, feel like guys that are fighting to be 20-ish in the Big Ten to me. Like Kam was probably the one you can safely say should be like top 15 range player in the conference, but man, like top three. I just I was losing my mind yesterday trying to think of how you could even come to that conclusion. Um, and last thing, we said it briefly on Burnett yesterday, I think, but like People are writing this dude off just because he doesn't have like the number production in college. I just want to compare like Ray J. Dennis was like the hottest name in the portal this whole offseason. Right. We talked about him a ton. I was lower on him the most, but like all these big name programs wanted him. What's Namari Burnett averaging at Toledo last year? If he played at Toledo cart. I think you have a good shot of being like Matt, uh, Matt player of the year. That's all I just want to say here is like, like, Ray J. Dennis was great, and he has an offensive skill set that in a lot of ways is better than Namari Burnett's from what we've seen. But if you just dropped Alabama's third best guard last year on Toledo's roster and asked him to be the best player, Namari Burnett looks totally different than he looks right now. There's still a really talented player in there, and now he's going to get some opportunities. So um, don't write him off. With that said, calm down. On Olivier Conway. It's obnoxious. All right. That was my half of this deal, Cart. Now we have to move to your half of this deal. 